Hundreds of delegates have gathered at the Marriott Hotel in Kingston, Georgetown for the second annual International Energy Conference and Expo. And while Guyana's oil and gas industry has taken center stage, the country's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, has made it clear that oil and gas is just one part of the country's plan for sustainable development. He addressed the opening ceremony on Tuesday and said that Guyana is using the Low Carbon Development Strategy, or LCDS, as a model for its development. And he believes that this LCDS can be a blueprint for global development. Guyana's position is to make the LCDS a global model for development, for sustainable development. The LCDS is no longer a Guyana document. We are embarking on a mission to make the LCDS a global model for sustainable development. Because we know what the LCDS is capable of. And whilst we have the fanciful talk about how do you help indigenous people, Prime Minister Rowley, on Wednesday, because of what the LCDS has earned for Guyana, on Wednesday, Tushaus, leaders of our Amerindian villages, will receive a check in their hands for the people of those villages as a result of the LCDS and what it has earned for our country. As part of the LCDS, Ghana is getting payments to keep its forests intact. And those payments, alongside oil and gas revenues, President Ali said, will help to facilitate substantial development in Guyana. One of the greatest impediments to national development in Guyana has been and continued to be the cost of energy. Continues to be the cost of energy and the reliability of energy. Fortunately for us, in two years, in record time, we have been able to put together a project, the natural gas project, the energy project, in record time, that meet, let me make this very clear, that meet every aspect of international scrutiny and transparency that will cut the cost of energy by half before the end of 2025. While President Ali focused on Guyana's development, the conversation on climate change and its impact on Guyana and the wider Caribbean was not absent. He believes that with the LCDS, Ghana can continue to demonstrate environmental stewardship. However, it was the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Rowley, who emphasized that small developing countries like those in the Caribbean, which have not traditionally contributed to climate change, should be allowed to exploit their resources. The concept of climate change should not prevent developing countries from using fossil fuels as sources of energy in pursuit of economic growth. It is interesting to note that during the rethink, insofar as circumstances demand, some developed countries have fired up their old coal burning plants and have declared hitherto despised nuclear power as clean energy. The Caribbean response is to designate natural gas as the clean energy reserve our right and willingness to continue for and market oil resources and invest in green energy and technologies as far as we are able to. The conference continues for the rest of this week and the conversation on energy is expected to evolve. Reporting for the newsroom from the Marriott Hotel in Kingston, Georgetown, I am Krishani Raghavir.